Hi, this is Ann DeSantis, and I'm the director of the St. Raymond Onatsis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. You can learn more about us at our website at nonatsis.org. I'm very pleased today because I have a, a wonderful guest here on our video. I have Ed Lawrence, he's from the Philadelphia area, and he's going to talk to us today about a wonderful organization called Prayers Unite the World. So make sure you take note of that because it's a terrific and beautiful Catholic organization. And Ed, I'd like to welcome you to our podcast here. Thank you, Ed. It's a pleasure being here. Share the story of Prayers Unite the World with, with your audience. Thank you so much. Ed, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your own faith journey with us before we talk about Prayers Unite the World. Certainly. Uh, I'm a Philly native and uh, who, who went through uh, complete Catholic education, Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. Uh, I spent some time in the seminary, and uh, and after the seminary, uh, I got a job in, with the Archdiocese uh, teaching religious studies at Archbishop Ryan High School, which is up in the Northeast. And uh, I, I was teaching there for a little over 40 years. I had to retire for a health reason, uh, but it was around that time when um, a couple of incidences started this ministry called Prayers Unite the World. And uh, as one of the uh, bishops in Philadelphia had said to me when I was talking about the website and, and when it really was, was in, it, in its infancy, just thinking about it at that point, when he said to me, Egg, hey, God could be saying to you, I don't need you in this part of the ministry. Me, or this part of the the uh, uh, the vineyard, meaning the high schools, but I might need you here, meaning the website. And uh, my response was, well, as long as it's his vineyard, I'm good to go. Uh, so uh, so we began began the ministry, uh, and, and there is quite frankly an interesting story of how that came about, which I could share with you. Please do. Uh, well, the story goes like this. I happened to be surfing the internet one night and came across the Trappist Monastery in North Africa, where seven Trappist monks were murdered in the mid 90s. Mm. And uh, on my side board at Archbishop Martin High School, I did a collage of pictures. But one of those pictures was of the seven Trappist monks. So when I saw that we had their monastery, I was connected with their monastery, I sent them an email. And the email simply said, I have a picture of your martyred brothers on my wall at Archbishop Ryan High School. Please pray for my students. Well, I was surprised, but the next day I got an email back from them in French, which I then took to the French teacher and said, George, what are they saying? And he said, well, you know, they're praying for your students. So in one of those very teachable moments, I walked into the classroom, took out the email, told the students what I did and, and what I was told and said. And I said, so kids, right now there's literally people around the world praying for you. And every teacher knows when you say something and it registers with your students, you could see it. And you could also see when it doesn't register, but you could see when it registers. And I could see that that meant something to them. And truth be told, I, I just thought it was a, a nice experience for, you know, for the students. Let's get to the lesson plan for today. But about a week later, I'm going through the school cafeteria in the faculty dining room, and one of the cafeteria aides stops me and asks if I could have some prayers said for her daughter-in-law who was having a difficult pregnancy. So this time what I did was I sent an email up to the Abbey of the Genesee, the Trappist uh, uh, community in upstate New York, where, I, where I've gone for retreats. And uh, sent them an email and asked them to pray for this intention. I printed out their homepage, brought it into school, and saw the cafeteria woman, Alice, and said, Alice, give us to your daughter-in-law and tell her that there are people praying for her. And it was Alice's reaction, as I often say. It was like a wow moment. And I kept thinking, everybody should have that kind of experience. And I kept thinking, how could how can we do that? How can I do something like that? And um, I got together with some of my, my students 
and just ratify them like kids here's what i'd like to see some way of having people people's prayer requests go to different religious communities uh but let the people know something about those religious communities and uh, and they had said mr lawrence you could do have a computer do anything so i went on a fact-finding mission i got together with the pink sisters i got together with the poor clares i got together with the carmelites just really to get a sense of what can we do to get people's prayer requests to you where it wouldn't be a burden and somehow you know get a response back to those people and based on the input that that i received from the various communities uh we at least on paper did a diagram of how prayers unite the world would work and what it would work is that someone would send in a prayer request we would bundle it with a few others and then send it out to representatives of various religious communities that would pray for those intentions but we would send back to the petitioner an email that would say to them, these are the communities that have people praying for you. Click on the links to know more about them. So now people could find uh, information about communities they might not even know existed. So that was the genesis of it. Uh, the other interesting thing, which I always, I also said to my students, you walk down that road in faith. God could have something around the corner that's meant for you, you don't know that until you take that walk in faith, right? So I'm literally contacting different religious communities to explain to them how it could work. Um, there was one community where I, I sat down with, with two of the sisters and um, it, it really touched my heart that at one point, one of the sisters said to me, well, how much is this gonna cost? And I was taken back by it because it was like, no, I don't want money from you. If anything, I, I hope that we could do something that could send you, you know, send you some help. Uh, but what I did was I had one of my former students uh, see if he can contact the programmer. Because uh, as I often tell people, if I turn the computer on and it lights up, that's about the extent of my computer literacy. But the point was this, I said to him, see if you can find somebody who can do the intricacy of what we want and how much, just so I have an idea. And uh, he got back to me and he said to me, I found somebody, I checked his work out. It would take 60 to 80 hours of computer time at $100 an hour. So I said, okay, well that's between six and $8,000. At least I have a ballpark figure. I don't know where we're gonna get it from, but ballpark figure. So, so it goes like this. When I met with the Carmelites on Old York Road in Philadelphia, at that time, there were five nuns in the monastery, and and they were up there in age. And I walked back to my car thinking, my God, these people need all the help they can get. And I thought, well, maybe if, you know, I, I connected with the school, since I'm a teacher, maybe we can involve the school somehow. And uh, I contacted uh, Bishop Michael Fitzgerald, who's in charge of Catholic education, and he directed me to the woman in charge of catechetics. Mm. And when I met with her, and explain what I wanted to do. She said, my God, this is exactly what we're looking for. And she goes, and there may be some grant money for it. Oh, and, goodness. Which, which begged the question, gee, like, how much? And, and truth be told, I, I was hoping well, maybe a thousand, maybe two, something that would at least get me going. And the response was oh, around, around 8,000. And I thought, okay, that's what the programmer said that he wanted. This is what the, I think I just heard God say go. So we start the process going. And um, we did have one snag a couple of weeks before we were going to have this launch where I had, you know, Bishop Fitzgerald coming up. I had Abbot Antonucci from Dale Sword Abbey coming up. I had the heads of all these various religious communities and Catholic organizations like the Knights of Columbus, the St. Vincent of Paul Society, all coming. I'm informed that the program, programmer doesn't think he can get it done in time. And I thought, well, we better have something. We had to scramble to find somebody else. And all I kept thinking was, I hope he can get it done in time. And I hope it doesn't cost that much. The end result was the second guy, not only got it done in time, but he got it done for 3,200. And as I said to the seminarians at St. Charles, when I gave him a talk uh, a little, little over a year ago, I said to him, fellas, the archdiocese loves it. 
when you can get things done on time and <laughs> way under budget. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good that news. The hand that's of God. Good news. I mean, that, that, that was really the hand of God. And it was like, yes, absolutely. Like it. So yes. that's when it was launched, September 19th, 2016, the first anniversary of the World Media Family. Okay. Wow. So it's been four years then. Yeah. Very and, good. Uh, and it has continued uh, to grow. Uh, we, we've, done, uh, we've done things that I never thought we'd wind up doing. But you, as I said, you go where the spirit leads. Mm -hmm. You'll know. You, you'll just know. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, we have probably about 150 or so religious communities, Catholic organizations, parishes, schools. Uh, we are also promoting the causes for about uh, maybe about 22, 23 uh, candidates for sainthood. Oh, wow. Uh, Very good. So you go with the spirit leads. That's uh, right. That's right. I should also, if you wouldn't mind, Ed, I would like to also mention something that's happening that some of peop the people who are watching this video might like to know about is on the topic of saints, is mm -hmm. that there is a conference coming up uh, on uh, October 22nd and 23rd with smartcatholics.com. It's called Modern Saints. And actually, I am going to be giving a short talk on St. Catherine Drexel. So I just want to make a shout out to people if they'd like to go uh, over to uh, smartcatholics.com and learn about that. Thank you. Well, it, Not it, to interrupt, but I just, you were talking about saints. No, and, and quite frankly, you know, people need to see that. People yes. need to see the lies of these true heroes and heroines of the faith. Uh, and again, become aware of people who they might not even know existed. Uh, so, for example, one of the causes we have up on our website is the cause for Father Bill Atkinson. Oh, yes, Father Bill Atkinson. Quadriplegic, uh, you know, had acted when he was in the seminary, you know, quadriplegic, was ordained by Cardinal Kroll, and really was a great mo role model in the sense of this is a cross that, you know, that, that, you know, that you've gotten. What do you do with it? and how he responded to it. I was talking with some people last night and I mentioned Father Bill Atkinson told him, I had a former student that graduated from mine in 1980 who had an accident, she was paralyzed in the neck down. Hmm. And, you know, this is so, certainly a good role model for how do, you, how do you handle these crosses that are brought to you? How do you see Christ through all that? And they Amen. look at these people and you see it. So, That's right. Again, it's making people like that, uh, you know, making people that out there in the world, letting people know that. So, uh, and then, like I said, in terms of, of the website itself, how we, um, we arrange it so that we send that email back to the petitioner, we encourage them to go onto the links to know more about those people that are praying for them. And, um, I am always amazed at the ministries that are going on within the church. Um, yes, there are. It's such a, it's, it's good to know that even despite what's happening in our world, especially right now, there's so much good going on with organizations such as yours, Prayers Unite the World and others. So I thank you too, Ed, for, uh, for all you do and for the people who are working with you and praying, right? It's, it's really about offering those prayers. And, and, you mentioned about the people working with me. It's um, a couple of my former students, friends of mine from uh, the Knights of Columbus, friends of mine from uh, the uh, Man Up Spirituality Conference that's held in Philly every year. Uh, we have those people involved and just other people that we've encountered in this journey. Uh, classic example, there's a group called Building a Bridge to Uganda. Um, and it was, again, through... <laughs> I was having lunch with a priest friend of mine. He mentioned, did you know about this group? You should know about this group. And I connected with them. And uh, sure enough, last year, we arranged for students from Conwell Egan Catholic High School up in Bucks County to essentially Zoom with Pope John Paul II Academy in Uganda. 
and um, it was late in the day for them, early in the morning for the kids to come. We're leaving, but as I said to one of the uh, to Bishop McIntyre, uh, when he is one of the uh, uh, auxiliary bishops of Philadelphia, I said when they began the program, and they had the students from Uganda and the students from Commonwealth Egan stand up, and they both prayed the Our Father. I said, anything after that was was nice. That was the thing that made my day, because it really was a prayer uniting the world, the children of God together. Different countries, different races, but God's children. And that's the stuff that we have. We can do more of that kind of stuff. Yes, and the Holy uh, Spirit is at work. I remember you telling me that story before. That really is a beautiful story and what it's all about, what prayers unite the world is all about. So, uh, so tell us what's happening now. Is there anything that you want people to know on this video about what's going on right now with prayers unite the world? Sure. Now here's, a, and it's a perfect example. Um, what we notice is the fact that the church needs evangelization. We have to get the word out there. And I keep emphasizing that it's the people that are in the pews have to be the conduit to the people that are not in the pews to bring them back. And one way they can do that is by simply praying for them. So uh, a couple months ago, I got together with the IT. Now, be aware of this thing. Everything's volunteer. Everybody volunteers. Except for that thing that where the Archdiocese paid for the website to go up, everything else is volunteer, uh, including the IT who volunteers. But I said to him, we have, it'd be nice to have a way to uh, include the groups that have people pray. So for example, one of the things that we're doing at Archbishop Bryan is we have some students who are involved with the Kairos Retreat Program. And what they are doing is sending in prayer requests for the intentions of the alumni. Mm -hmm. And the alumni, or the alum rather, will get an email that will say, a member of the Archbishop Wide community requested prayers on your behalf. Here are the, the uh, Catholic communities and organizations that have people pray for you. Now, um, I'd like to believe that all of the students that graduate from Ryan, all of the students that graduate from any high school, are still connected with their faith. This is a nice way of reminding them that, that their school is there, their alma mater is there, and that the purpose of that school was to help them develop their relationship with God. And here's a reminder that the students that are in there are asking prayers for you. So it's, it's a nice, subtle way of doing that. Uh, we're doing something similar with the Knights of Columbus, mm. uh, doing the same type of thing, uh, so that if someone gets an email, it will say, for example, a member of the Father Thomas Ryan Council of the Knights of Columbus requested prayers on your behalf. Here's the community organization that are praying for you. So now, they not only know about those communities, but they're reminded about the Knights of Columbus and that this group exists and they can click on, on the link to that website and see all the good work that council is doing uh, and also find out about those religious communities. So that was just something that came out past couple, you know, past couple months and we are in the process of, of getting that word out. So it keeps, like I said, you follow the spirit. It just goes where it goes. You just have to be open to it and God will, God will get you there. Yeah, that, that's so beautiful. Um, and I want to make also another uh, call out to a friend of both yours and mine. I believe you know Mickey Kelly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mickey is also the president of this organization. I'm mm -hmm. the director. And so he's also done so much for us. Uh, he is uh, really uh, um, such a, a, a devoted member of the pro-life community in Philadelphia. I know he's done mm -hmm. so much with uh, play, praying every single week at the abortion facility. So, and also as a valued member of Knights of Columbus too, right? Exactly. As a matter of fact, two weeks ago, we did a webinar with some of the people that he lined up for Prairie Night the World to explain to him how oh. we're doing it with the Knights. That's so wonderful. That, yeah. And we have another one coming up on November 3rd, 
uh, and we're going to continue doing that kind of thing um, now that we have the process developed. So now, God willing, you know, we'll have more people out there evangelizing simply through the power of prayer. Um, I'll just end with this. I always said to my students, what convinced people to join the church in the early days was not theology. No one said, let me sit down and explain um, you know, this aspect of theology kind of thing. It was more, see how these Christians love one another. You know, that is true. You, the St. Francis said, preach the gospel every day and when necessary, use words. Use words. Use actions that do it. So, as I said with the Knights, if the Knights send a prayer request for a friend whose daughter's in the hospital and, and that friend gets an email saying, Knights are praying for your, you know, for your daughter, um, that could reach that person where they really wonder, where's God in my life? You never know. Uh, so, it's, it's getting out there. And that's the thing, as I said, I keep going back to it. You go where the spirit leads. Don't worry about anything. Go where the spirit leads. Amen. You said it so well. And it is true that uh, our actions uh, through the Holy Spirit and how we show our love to God and to others is really what brings people, I think, into the church. So thank you for your work there. Um, we're just about going to be finished pretty soon. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell people about Prayers Unite the World, or how they, they can connect with you or with the organization? Certainly. It, it, they could, first of all, they can contact me, and I'll give you my email address at Ryan. It's E. Lawrence, so it's E L A W R E N C E at A R H S dot org. A R H S, and that stands for Archbishop Ryan High School dot org. Um, and go onto the website. There's there's a link on the website where you can also connect with me that way. Or Very good. There. Now, you and I are both in the greater Philadelphia area. We do have people who are connected with us throughout the United States and beyond. Uh, so even though you and I are here, because it's prayers unite the world, right? <laughs> uh, that means that even if you're located someplace outside of where we are, please do connect with Ed. Um, now, we're going to have to come back and do a part two because you have so much more to tell us about what you're doing and about this organization. Uh, I wondered if you could leave us with any of your own prayer intentions for Prayers Unite the World or just anything for, for your own prayer requests. Well, I think, first of all, in terms of everything that's happening in the world today, we need some yes. prayers on that behalf. Uh, you know, we're living in really, really crazy times. And as I said to someone again yesterday i said the only thing that's going to heal this world is god you know that's the only thing it, it, it's the only thing uh and, and the way to do that quite frankly is to help witness the faith by our action more people see that we keep planting the seed so you know my prayer is, is that that people you know basically live the faith the best way they possibly can and be an emissary for Christ in the process. Amen. 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 Lord, hear our prayer. And also St. Raymond Anatus, pray for us. Our Lady of Mercy, pray for us. I have to say that because uh, St. Raymond Anatus obviously is our patron saint and asking for Our Lady of Mercy to pray for your intentions and for prayers unite the world. And also for all of you who are watching this, we pray for your intentions. I invite you to connect with the St. Raymond Anatus Foundation at nonatus.org. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. And Ed, thank you. So we will see you next time here with the St. Raymond Anatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. God bless. God bless.